Now, interestingly, the minute the SailGP Aarhus event had finished, there seemed there was a mass exodus down to Lake Garda, where the International Moth World Championships were being held. It often amuses me that when we see these top professional sailors racing in the America's Cup, SailGP, the Olympics, or many other professional events, when they get some time off, they go on a busman's holiday to go and race an international foiling moth. And that's exactly what they did after SailGP in Aarhus. Because in Lake Garda, it was World Championships time. And the 140 boat entry list read like a who's who of international yachting, with some of the top stars in the scene. I'll read you just a few. Tom Slingsby, Paul Goodison, Nathan Outridge, Ian Jensen, Francesco Bruni, Carl Langford, Phil Robertson, Dylan Fletcher. The list goes on and on. And whilst the International Foiling Moth is one hell of a class and certainly very appealing, how many of us would really fancy our chances in that fleet? There are 12 women competing at the Worlds this year and we hope for double that at the Worlds next year. So definitely a call to all the women who are interested. Um, definitely the, the best way to get started is just to uh, reach out to somebody and, and dive in. It's fantastic to see how many, how many women, ladies, girls are out here sailing. It was very special to see them out in the, the camp before the world started, getting some extra help from the class association with a bit of coaching, get them up to speed, and it's, it's fantastic to see them all out on the water. So we had two good races this, uh, this afternoon. Um, the first one went really well, had a nice start and pretty much uh, was up there, the top two all the way around and, and finished first, so really happy with that. The second one, I was a little conservative at the start, I thought a couple of boats were over, so I hung back and made it really difficult, just fighting back through the fleet. I managed to grab the lead off Goobs momentarily, but then uh, didn't do the best tack and, and ended up second, but uh, the feeling's really good. I uh, really enjoyed sailing here, it feels like we're in paradise. Today is an important day, uh, three more races and uh, right in the middle of the Gold Fleet. Uh, points are tight, uh, obviously not for leading, but for the rest of the fleet. Uh, Tom uh, has a huge advantage at the moment. But in racing you never know. Uh, we just have to, to keep doing less mistakes as possible. We try to fight as hard as we can. Uh, the level of the Gold Fleet is really high. And that's why we are really enjoying the, the Moth class. Today was a really tough day for me. Um, it was a little bit lighter and a little bit patchier and I was making um, a few boat handling mistakes at the wrong time in the race and it really cost me. So, I mean, all's not lost. But apart from Tom, we're all pretty tight on points still and um, we've got another three races tomorrow. Um, really just try to execute some clean races. But when it came to the top silverware, it was Tom Slingsby who took it once again, dominating the racing. Today's race was, it was really nice. Yeah, it's really good to get out and sail in the morning breeze. A lot more wind. Uh, I wasn't thinking it was going to be that much wind, so I wasn't really set up for sort of 18, 19, 20 knots. But uh, yeah, it was beautiful out there, and yeah, the races were great. Fast races, going, ripping down wind at nearly 30 knots is a lot of fun. 
And as a reward for all that hard effort and raw talent, he got to celebrate by letting his friends spray him with champagne, something he's getting pretty used to this season. And then when the t-shirts had dried out, it was back onto a plane off to Saint-Tropez for the next leg of Sail GP. So if you've ever wondered why the top sailors are just so good at foiling, there's a few clues, they never stop. <laughs>